Downing Street in the heart of London always forms the stage for the most significant statements in British politics. So when media outlets were suddenly summoned to the press pens opposite number 10, everyone knew the Prime Minister was about to drop a bombshell. I have just chaired a meeting of the Cabinet where we agreed that the government should call a general election to be held on the 8th of June. Since I became Prime Minister, I have said that there should be no election until 2020. But now I have concluded that the only way to guarantee certainty and stability for the years ahead is to hold this election and seek your support for the decisions I must take. And so tomorrow, this will be a Brexit election. Theresa May hopes to increase the tiny majority she inherited from David Cameron, silence critics within her own party and crush the Labour opposition to ensure Parliament can't derail her plans for how Britain leaves the European Union. At this moment of enormous national significance, there should be unity here in Westminster. But instead, there is division. The country is coming together, but Westminster is not. The surprise announcement caught everyone off guard and sent MPs scurrying to the lawns outside the country's parliament to deliver the first sound bites and slogans of a 51-day campaign. Did you expect this? No. Not at all? Not at all. I think when she sat down and looked at the difficulty of getting the legislative programme home uh, just as one issue to get Brexit uh, safely home uh, in that place in Parliament, I think she could then see there was a, a serious case for a general election. Over the course of the next two years, there are going to be votes on just about every piece of domestic and international policy, whether it's welfare, whether it's sanctions, uh, whether it's a new immigration system, that will be horribly divisive that Theresa May needs to win, and she pretty much needs to win them all. So can she do it on a with a majority of 18? I always thought it was really quite hard. She probably needs to be looking at numbers like 60 or 70 or preferably 100 plus. Because of the scale of opposition, you're going to have different types of opposition to the immigration deal that she proposes from the kind of trade deal that she, that, she, that she works out. So I think don't think of Brexit as a moment, but as an event. It's very, very tough. So she needs big numbers behind her in the Commons. <laughs> The election odds are well and truly in the Prime Minister's favour and point to a landslide victory for the Conservatives. Even many Labour MPs give their left-wing opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn little chance of causing an upset. Did uh, Labour make a mistake last year by not replacing Jeremy Corbyn? Well, 80% uh, of the Parliamentary Labour Party uh, signed a motion of no confidence in Jeremy. Uh, he then saw out a challenge, uh, you know, he's been elected. Uh, we can speculate until we're blue in the face. We're not in a great place nationally. I can't pretend that uh, being 20 points behind in the opinion polls is a good place to be. I'm starting straight away and I'm looking forward to it. We will take our message to every single part of this country and we'll t challenge the government to debate these issues in every town and city in this country. With Labour in turmoil, the leader of the Liberal Democrats is already on the campaign trail, seeking to make his party the third force in this election. The Lib Dems are now the most pro-European Union party in Britain. In the UK population, there is a, a very sizeable chunk in the middle who do not favour either perhaps the extreme version of, of uh, Labour that Jeremy Corbyn has and, uh, advocated in the past, perhaps when he was a backbencher, or the very extreme uh, hard Brexit option that the Prime Minister is ch has chosen to pursue so with a very small middle. clique of people around her. Yes, yeah, so there's space for the Liberal Democrats in the middle. But a few blocks away in the Speaker, the favourite pub of Westminster MPs and lobbyists, the election outcome is seen as a foregone conclusion. Oh, it's, a, it's going to be the Conservatives, yeah. I mean, we, we, we just don't have a credible alternative at the moment. Do you think the country's in a good place? Are you happy with what Theresa May's doing? Bloody awful place. <laughs> a bloody awful place. It's a mess. It's a complete mess. I mean, we've got a Brexit that, that um, no one really knows um, what's about. We've, we've got Scotland who are like um, pushing for independence, who might very well gas it. 
we've got um, an Northern Irish Assembly, which um, no, one, no, no one's even mentioned, which um, hasn't been formed yet. And um, OK, the, the indicators are good, but the currency is going down. So um, on, the, on the balance, it's not really the best, best place to be going from, no. Patrons, like much of the country, are sick of voting and divided as to exactly what the SNAP poll will achieve in the long run. I think the whole country is, will be relieved that we can unite and move forward no matter what the colour of your politics. I think it's the right thing to do to clear the air and to move forward and everyone's got to vote. It's, uh, I think if she's hoping for any anti-Brexit scrutiny to just die and go away as a result of this general election, then that's never going to happen. Conventional wisdom among political pundits suggests this snap election is a good tactical move, but conventional wisdom also suggested that Brexit would never happen in the first place. How many more times are you going to change your mind, Prime Minister? So over the next seven weeks, it's impossible to rule out more twists that could once again turn this nation's political future on its head.